fresh. A very fresh, clean scent behind. Uh, fast drying. How many of you guys spend a lot of time drying dogs? Sometimes you don't know why. Like That's how the color stays. So yeah, when you do when you do conditioner, it's going to hinder your dry time. Period. No matter what kind of conditioner you use, uh, this conditioner is you know cut your time a little bit shorter, um, and it and partially opens the the cuticle, the follicle. What I mean by that? So we clean shampoo, we clean the dog, and the follicle stays closed. So it's not going into the skin. It's not penetrating. We, I don't want to get into that, but that's kind of like uh, the cosmetology part of it. The skin and what the owners focus on is the follicle. You can't treat a hair or improve a hair without getting to the skin. The skin is where it all starts. Yes? Does it matter the water temperature? If it's better with hot? Water temperature does matter. Now we like hot because the dog, what is the dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you warm up and you still hot. <laughs> I still do it. Oh no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> you do hot water. It's not hot, scorching hot, but I suggest lukewarm water. Use lukewarm water. Doesn't open or close the follicle, and it also does not irritate the skin. So you use hot water. It messes with the skin, irritates it a little bit. You get dermatitis. You get dermatitis, you get other things popping up, you don't know what's going on, it's usually from hot water. So use lukewarm water. Um, if you got a mobile, uh, bet your boss is gonna be happy because you're not using as much yeah. gas for the generator. <laughs> this might not make sense, but the extra soft is not diluted, right? It's no. sulfate free, which we can use on the face. Yes. Can you use that on the face without applying water first since it's not a diluted solution? You gotta you gotta lather it up. You so you have to wet the face. So you just okay. and then you can work it in. And then same with the body. The only time you want to use water first is when you can't dilute the shampoo. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, and it's made with oatmeal extract. So not only cleans the dog, but it's good for the skin. Doesn't hurt it. <clears throat> Moist shampoo designed to be used on all coats, fast drying, and easy rinse formula. Pearl finishing, which leaves a little shine to your coat, and suitable for dogs and cats of all breeds. All these products are good for cats. You what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's okay. not many products out there that's good for both dogs One and other cats. question, though. Yes. I don't know how many other groomers in here, but what about rabbits? Oh, because I that became that. highly popular in our area. That's so random. Hey, you said cats. We're just going along with your cats. I need to brush up on my rabbits. And ferrets too. They became extremely popular. That's Marley. And you have a you have a chinchilla. You wash your chinchilla. The ferrets. What do you call the other neutralizer? I'm using the other neutralizer. My ferrets. Oh, other neutralizer. Got it. Thanks. We also have two rabbits at the shop. Hey, it's not weird. Is it good for a guinea pig? We're in Claremont. We have four people with Angora rabbits. And I'm like, what? They take forever. It's not weird. I received one with the bird with the... The cockatiel? Yeah. I'll send you an email. We'll put a hydro works on rabbits. See? We can work together. I got you. I got you. I'll try it on my rabbits first at the shop. If they die, we know it didn't work. Oh, <laughs> I need to get a phone number because I have a long hair. So here it says wet the coat thoroughly. Of course, if you're diluting it, don't dilute it. Like, don't wet the dog. We're killing time. Oh. You guys aren't leaving yet. So close. <laughs> <laughs> the double dip. I didn't go over the double dip. Odor neutralizer. You want to do the odor neutralizer, and then you want to do moist on your average dog, depending on what's going on. Him, I use the extreme, and for the legs, I use volumizer. I did them yesterday, and you can see, you know, that. Well, I like the volume. Awesome. It works magically. It's beautiful. <laughs> So the, if you're not using volumizer or anything, suggested 
uh, shampoo to use is odor neutralizer and moist. So moist is not hydrating, it's an everyday on all coats, everything. Those two combinations together, when you do the face, you do the jacket, when you rinse, you want to rinse one time if you're doing one bath. So you want to lift the head up, you want to rinse the head, that way all the soap that falls out falls onto the dog that already has soap. Because what do we do? Naturally, rinse the body and, and then we go to the face. It's natural. Everybody does it. I did it. And if you just kind of stop yourself from doing that and go from the head and work your way back, you don't have to go over the body again. Because everything runs back on the body and you know, then you leave soap and usually the soap is always around here. You ever like drive the dog and it gets a little and you're like, yeah, I'm not sticking you back up. <laughs> <laughs> we do it. We'll play innocent, we all do it. Um, so yeah, just to cover that and, and move on to the next topic, to save time, that's, it, 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 it changed my life, literally, when I started rinsing the, the head and the body at the same time. Squeegee the dog with your hand as you're rinsing. Not only can you feel when the dog is clean, but you can also be quicker rinsing the dog. You want to squeegee. Same when the dog is clean, rinsed. You want to grab your hand, squeegee all the water before you hit it with the towel. Um, so yeah, that's how you're gonna save time in the bath. That's how you're gonna save time. Uh, just remember it. And also save energy doing laundry and things like that. And the dog doesn't get a, you know that much drier by using more more towels or whatever. Uh, mobile's a whole other story. You gotta get the dog quicker, drier, and there's a lot of cases where those six towels are gonna help you out. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind, and then now I'm gonna go into the prep work. So uh, everybody knows how to do nails and pads and all that stuff, but how, how many of you guys just kind of do it in whatever order? Same routine. Same routine. Same routine. Sandy pads, ears, nails. nails. There. Boom. Sandy pads, ears, nails. 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 I I do like that. You start with the sandy? I do the sanitary area, and then I actually go to the pads, then I actually go to the ears, and then do the nails. No, no I do like that. This is like boom, boom, boom. I do nails. I don't know why. Yeah. I just do the pads. And then how many of you guys do the sandy and the tushy? Yeah. Do the Sometimes, little, if it doesn't have the, 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 whole the ring of fire, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you get your clipper work done in the same time, you save you save five minutes. I promise you. So if you do, rather than I don't suggest to do the sandy first because if there's something going on there, you put it on the pads. Uh, no, I, that's why I check first but, before I actually do you know, that. Usually you get those clean dogs. You don't have to worry about you know transferring anything or whatever. So, but your clipper work wants to be at the same time. You want to do your clipper work all at once. So when you put the clipper down, you don't have to clip, pick the clipper up. That little step right there, no matter how or what order you do it in, saves you five minutes. The handling of the dog, because we all struggle with how, how to do it, right? So I'll show you different ways to do it. This prep needs to get done. So I'm going to show you different ways of maneuvering around the dog and doing it. And what is too much, what is not enough, and like what is like good enough? Because what is our service? Or what is our job as groomers? Providing a service of what? Cleaning the dog and making the dog cleaner and better looking. Our job is not to be a Picasso. We're not Picasso. And I'm a big believer in making sure that your job is not about making the dogs look in as pretty as possible or as cute as possible. For me, it's about providing the dog with safety, cleanliness, and providing a good service, right? So as long as you provide a good service and you create a rapport with your customer, that customer does not care when you chop that ear off by accident, <laughs> or it's matted and you have to shave it. Yeah. It happens. And if you don't have a good rapport with your client, the minute you tell them you gotta shave the dog, you're the worst person on the planet, and you might just possibly lose the client. And you gotta realize who those clients are the minute they walk in the door. You know who they are. The minute they're looking for a deal, the minute they're looking for the cheapest groomer, they come in with that coupon. That dog is matted, and it's matted every time. 
Yeah. You know, you keep them at it. You're teaching the client that it's okay to come in like that. It's okay to wait six months. Um, so now I'm gonna. I like to work from behind the dog. It's most comfortable on my back. And it's also easy to get everything done in one position. So I put them in one position. Also, male dogs, the best way to control even a female dog is right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you got to grab, you know. That's always the best way to handle it. And they stay exactly where you want them to be. So for me, back of the dog is always the best. I can lift the dog up natural position with my 40 blade. I can crisscross, go in and scoop. That's really all you need to do. You, you know, you want you want to eat out of the foot, and <laughs> nobody nobody's putting a piece of chicken in there and eating. So there's no reason to clean it up. Your client is not saying, oh, I love the groomer because she really cleans the feet. <laughs> like, when they're in bed and they're like inspecting the dog and the dog sleeps with them, then, you know, they might notice you know, a little hair sticking out and might tell you, but it's going to stick out. It doesn't, it, you, know, you don't have to get in there. there. There's no, there's really no purpose behind it. Your client does not realize it. Trust me. And then we'll get into the nails and I'll tell you another thing that your client does not realize. So I can grab the other leg, say I haven't moved. I can do the same thing on this side. I'm not going all the way up in the front. I'm not digging in there too much. I'm gonna go the opposite way really lightly because that's how you cut the foot. And that's good. Same position, right here, everybody can see, and I do the same thing here. Oh, I know, I'm too short, I like to stand right to the toes. I have two people who are like yours, your heart, they do the same thing. Without stopping and explaining everything to you, you can see basically it's less than two minutes, a minute possibly. Josh, what do you suggest if you're in a van and you have to stand in front of the table, like the table's up against the top and the counter, okay. you can't stand off the So side. you're you're stuck in one position like this, right? Yeah. And then like usually there's something here, and then there's something there, and then you got the tub right here. Typical setup of yeah. a grooming van. So from this side of the dog, Okay. Mm -hmm. Magic. It's beautiful. <laughs> Alright, so you always want to stay in one position. Don't bounce around the dog. Like literally all those little 30 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute adds up to a solid 20, 30 minutes that you're wasting on a dog. <clears throat> I talked about transferring stuff, so I like to do the feet first. My back, as young as I am, I don't feel young when it comes to my back. So I like to keep my back as less strained as possible. So if this so table's a little low, <laughs> your table wants to be to your waist. I'm gonna you know, squat, assume position, and then I'm gonna do the sani in the shape of a V. I'm gonna go just above the penis a little bit. And I'm going to shave the tip. There's some people out there, I, I've worked in a lot of places and met a lot of different groomers with different tactics. I'm not going to shave in here. I am not going to take all this off because it's valuable for this breed. But uh, you have a shave down, you want to come in and shave that. If you have a 10 and you're using a Brevera, nothing should happen. And if you're using the weight of the clipper and not, you should be fine. But this is pretty much it in a nutshell. I've met some people that like to leave the hair here uh, because the the pee direct goes in the. Huh? The pee 
dick wick. He has a dick wick. He has a That's the new name. So a wick is the, the candle. So like when the dog has a little hair in front, <laughs> so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go just above the the penis so that that hair in front of it doesn't get wet either. And I'm gonna take everything off on the tip as well. And if that was terribly matted on the belly and on, would you just take it all off if you were yeah, down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really don't need it. Even for a schnauzer, I can take this off on the salmon and you won't notice. So, really don't need it. A good 50% of dogs I do. I suggest that because that's where they're getting matted and mom appreciates it because the dog no longer gets matted. Those are the things mama notices. Not not those super clean feet. I know the landing strip. Landing strip. Uh, and then same with the girls. The girls have a little strawberry back there, and the girls also have a little... Are you going to call you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it in that So you, you want to go from side to side and make sure you get the, the, the wink off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. I'm gonna let you guys say it. So you want to do the same thing for a girl with a little strawberry. You want to make sure because the same with the girl. I, I I can't stand it when a dog jumps on you and and you can feel the, yeah. that yeah. on on your arm. Yeah. So uh, it's the same with the girl. The girl is the same way. A girl and finds heat, and that's even worse. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing, so if I have to shave eye boogers, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, sometimes I get it in the bath, but if save time, I like to do it on like your typical pets, shave around the eye boogers, do your thing before you go to the dish. Why? Because I did it one time and I grossed myself out. I said, I'm so sorry. I did that. <laughs> but, and it was one of those nasty little... That was a little, ugh, it's a little gross, so. Okay, I know, I know I'm violating just for a second. Yeah. Oh, just a little bit. You don't want to go and dig in there. Nobody's eating chicken out of there either. <laughs> so you just want to make sure the air is free from the poop that's coming out. Before you do that, do whatever you need to do as far as ears or whatever. That's Before you get in there. Thing. There's a lot of dogs I don't pluck the ears on. I just kind of shave yeah. in there. If a dog comes in and it's full of ear, ear hair and or a puppy and it's never been pulled before, Ooh, you have uh, it, it's going to cause an ear infection. So you have to make sure the dog's already used to it. If, you know, you have a six-year-old dog that comes in and, it, and it's full of hair, just like leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Unless it's infected. Even if it's infected, I don't like messing with infected ears. Mm -hmm. I don't even like cleaning them. What does the client do? Your fault. Uh -huh. Your fault. Right you know, right. come on, that ear was disgusting when it came in. What do you mean it's my fault? But we I can't prove it. No, I'm good. Yeah. I checked their ears while the client's standing there. Jennifer, the you can't get around Jennifer. Her clients, <laughs> they are they are on a strict, strict <laughs> ritual. And they all are on the same page. But for most of those clients out there, and I'll take a picture of yeah. 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 the biggest yeah. problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm after the girls. Take a picture. Take a picture. We have a big problem though, because a lot of the vets around us would be like, "It's the groomer's job to take out to take the hair out of the ears." That's my area too. Mm -hmm. Hold it and then we get blamed because like right? take the hair out and like the vet said you guys to. need to, and I'm like. We always say I like my fingers that. attached. We're not even supposed to do anal glands, say the truth. Well, actually, a lot of veterans are recommending not to take out that hair. That's how we do requests because if they tell you the new vets, the ones that are staying up to date. Yeah, the vets that are staying up to date will tell you don't pluck the ears. They'll tell that they'll tell their own clients we don't pluck the ears. If I pull it out and it smells funny or looks funny, I put it in the bag and there's things called pet rest card, pet rest cards. Uh -huh. So you're referring them to a vet. Okay. And you write down what you saw, okay. how it smells, where it was, and you hand it to that client and recommend they go see the vet. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Yeah. They don't even have to say anything. Like, here, you can read that one. 
I don't have time. I have like a vet who actually has never been updated at all. He always keeps recommending everybody to use Baby Johnson shampoo when the whole thing is like red and blotchy, yeast, or even like anything, especially like something bacterial fungus. Like he always kept saying, oh, use Baby Shampoo, Johnson Baby Shampoo all the time. Oh, yeah, that was actually really the, um, the groomers with the plug in ears there. And we wouldn't even touch it. Yeah, he's really that old and he doesn't even actually say anything. Alright, lost my train again. We're talking about the food. Do the food with the ears. Yeah, the butt last. And then do everything before you, you shave that area. Uh, and then the nails. So you got the nails. We all, you know, uh, there's. I know there's some of us out there. You know, we offer Dremel. We do Dremel. That's what makes us like different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, do, you do. We all did. I did it one time. Like, oh yeah, I Dremel every dog's nails, and my clients love me because I Dremel the nails. But we're like creating sculptures with these nails, <laughs> <laughs> and we're losing the complete sight of what the whole purpose of the Dremel is, which is rounding the edges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's just to make sure we don't scratch the client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no need to get it. Any... Well, that's not round. That one's a little tricky. <laughs> My clients like the way I do this, so I, I wanted to bring uh, like an alternative. It's an alternative. I'm not saying you have to change that. Whoever does that, that's great, but it does kill a lot of your time and especially with those difficult dogs oh, yeah. I see a lot of groomers struggling and fighting with dogs mm -hmm. just to do a Dremel like if you can't do the Dremel don't yeah. don't do it yeah. and if you can't do it huh? yeah some dogs won't let you clip but they'll let you drum mm -hmm. it's it's really strange but uh, if, if none of you guys have that this is four dogs but you can go to Sally's and buy one for people, and there, there's two sides to it a buck, mm -hmm. buffer, mm -hmm. and a sander. That's one glass? What yeah. is that? Glass. Yeah. 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 So, buffer and a sander, and you can use this manual, old school way of rounding the edges. And that's all you're doing. You're rounding the edges, you're taking the sharp edge off so it doesn't scratch the client. So, we have to, you know, remember that. Let's not get lost into this old. You know, oh, I recommend files now to all my clients. I said, while you're sitting now watching TV because they complain how the nail grows too fast, mm -hmm. I said, take a file mm -hmm. while you're watching TV. And it, it's a great add-on. So if you guys aren't charging extra for Dremel, if you're not a all-inclusive shop, like my, my, my shop in Fort Lauderdale is all-inclusive, mm -hmm. so uh, you, you've been in there. Every, everything's included. You want Medicaid, it's the same price. Mm -hmm. Blueberry Mine tea brushing, you know, and then we try to do Dremels on or Dremel on every dog. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of dogs that don't get it done; they just don't. And then if I can do the nail file, or sometimes they won't let you do it, you do it, and then that's how it's done. But in a case to where it's an add-on, you know, charge five bucks. So you don't have to charge fifteen dollars for a Dremel. It's, you know, you charge fifteen dollars for a Dremel, then then you yeah. You know, get them, get them nails on point. But if it's a five dollar extra, just round the edges. Trust me, they're not going to tell you to dremel it more. Trust me. And if they do, fire them. And you'll you'll replace that client with two more. That's something I had to learn. That my mentor taught me is never be afraid to fire a client. The minute you fire a client, you gain two more. Once you fire two, you gain four. Trust me. It actually, there's. Yeah. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. You know it. You know it. They come the six month out of the year and then they don't want to pay the sixty five dollars because the dog is pelted. Like that's the last time you're gonna do the dog and you let them know, here look, uh I'm sorry you had to spend so much, but uh you know you're gonna have to find another groomer. Oh well why? Well if you can't come to me every at least every ten weeks, you know, I don't I don't that's we don't need you. It's that simple. Too. Mm -hmm. A nail grows. I don't have a board here. <clears throat> but this is your nail. And when you cut the nail and the dog comes in, it, the nail grows, right? And it has a, it has a, 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 a tip at it. Mm -hmm. right? And the tip is usually goes in the direction, you know. And, and what do we naturally do? Cut it in the same direction. direction. So... I know a lot of you guys do it. The, let's say this is uh, this is the tip of the nail. 
and we're cutting it the same uh, direction like this okay. we're not getting the nail as short as possible so if none of you guys know this the nail grows from the top not the whole thing it's just the top so if you ever cut a nail and the dog comes back when you look you'll see little stretch marks if you're on a black nail you can see the stretch marks and that's how much the nails grown at an angle it's like a fan like a Chinese fan, the same thing. So you want to make sure you cut straight. You don't want to cut in the same direction because that's how you can't get the nail short. That's how you quick them because you you take this much and it's bleeding. You don't understand why, but if I cut it like this straight, I get that nail literally as short as it possibly can get. Sometimes you can cut it and you see the quick. There's a lot of times I cut and I see the quick. I'm like, damn, that was good. <laughs> and then you can just buff the edges and you're good to go so always remember that's one thing I learned a lot of groomers don't know that it grows from the top and instead of following the same line that's already there move your clipper uh, your nail clippers up I like to bring the dogs like this I don't have any nasty dogs that want to take my face off uh, but you can we always send you some. this to keep. <laughs> if you want to brag about it, we can send you some. To keep uh, the dog from getting your hand. So it's all about where your hands are positioned on the dog at all times when you are doing difficult dogs. I hate muzzles. I don't like to use them. Mm -hmm. Even if a dog's biting, I'd rather him yap and snap at nothing. You know, you can snap as long as you can't get my my um, my hand. I'm not scared of you, and that's another thing. You can't be scared. So I'm gonna cut from the top. I can cut like this, I can cut like this. <laughs> <laughs> and his quicks are pretty long, but it's a nice straight blunt cut. I know we tell everybody up. So I bring the nail up to me. There's no like thought process in it, then you grab it. Around the edges. There you go. Done. That's the nail. What are you right. doing? <laughs> you got the prep work done, then we're going to move to the body. We'll need a ten. <clears throat> Typical blades on a schnauzer four comb, two comb for those that are like super fluffy and body mice and they want a schnauzer but not really. It's like the two comb. Two comb, four comb, seven blade, five blade, and like my worst enemy, the four blade. I like don't really don't want to be using the four blade. I don't really ever use that number. How many times you said that? Huh? How many times show you said that? Yeah. She I, her four blade. Oh my god! Yeah. I don't understand it. That's just a uh, the three. I'd rather use the three than than a four. The three blade is awesome. Yeah. If you don't have a 3F, get it. Uh, it doesn't stay sharp or balanced for a while, so that's one blade you're going to have to uh, maintain. Uh, for him, I do a 7. A schnauzer pattern, like I said earlier, is very controversial. So it's a terrier. And it's also one of the terriers that is scissored, clipper, and strip. All of them in one. If there's some poodle in here, some point, back in the past, that makes the legs like this. So usually terriers, you pull the legs too, as you pull the jacket. With this breed, you do not pull the legs. The legs should be the complete opposite of the jacket. Uh, but to maintain this look, after I clip her, I run over with the, the cardi knife, yeah. and I carve the coat out, and I pull what I can if anything wants to come out. And you can see his hair is going in all different types of directions. A lot of people grab the clipper and they go. Oh like no! This. Oh my God! Yes. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> you do it. There's a couple dogs you can get away with it. I think that one I'm probably gonna do it. It's got some cow licks right here. They go that way. Kind of. It's okay. But there's some dogs you can get away. A poodle you can. Curly coat. You can get away with doing the side, but not a, a straight coat. So I start from the neck, I do a seven blade on him, and I'm gonna follow every curl. This dog, all your schnauzers, they don't look like this typically. They have like frail hair, yeah. and like you have to like leave the chest because it looks like they have boobies and it's really <laughs> strange. So um, 
the dog should look like it's going 100 miles an hour. You got a Schnauzer, a Scotty. It should, when you stand back and you look at your finished product, it should look like it's moving. So most terriers are flat in the front, straight flat. First thing you need to remember, no chest. My pets, there's like nothing there. And I know if I take the clipper down there, it's gonna look like I shaved it, mm -hmm. like with a razor. Mm -hmm. So I leave it and then, you know, if I have to cut it, whatever, but I usually leave it for the pets. Yeah. I start from the front, I take everything down. Hopefully. You see how I'm going down like this? Schnauzer should have baseball bat legs. Should be appearance of a baseball bat. Our pets can't do it if our life depended on it. Uh, so we try to keep it straight. But you go all the way down to the elbow. Shoulders tight should almost pinch the elbow. So I'm gonna go with the cowlick all the way down. And this is the only area of the dog I'm gonna scoop out because I don't want a, a soft gland. And I'm gonna pinch the front. Cowlicks are going this way. Every schnauzer in the world has this funky little cowlick on the top. And like if you do a, like a typical breed specific schnauzer, there's a certain way of pulling that hair so it does not grow out that way. But when you start clipping and you leave it alone, it is this weird cow leg. There's nothing really to get around it. Some of them have a little spot in there. You're like, Whoa. You can't do anything about it. So I'm gonna show you, uh, the, I think the best part of this haircut, you wanna make sure the skin is tight. You're doing long strokes. You're holding the clipper at the base like a pencil and you're using the weights of the clipper. You're not digging in there. Five minutes. Here's the secret. Everybody leaves a big skirt. There is no skirt. There is none. Like on the pet, sometimes you gotta leave it to give it that illusion of it moving forward. Uh, but there shouldn't be any. It should be very, very little. It's called an undercarriage, not a skirt. So I wanna make sure if you grab your dog and pull it up, it sets your pattern in the correct place. If you don't do this, you're like, mm -hmm. and then it's chop mark, and then it goes lower, and then it's, oh, God, and you leave it alone. Mm -hmm. So you always want to pull up, and then you want to come down and fall off. Right where this tuck up is, this flank steak, they call it the flank steak, it's very dangerous and flappy. Mm -hmm. Right above that is where your line starts. So I call it connect the dot. Here's one dot. Here's the second dot. The third dot is right at the thigh muscle. If you don't know where the thigh muscle is, some, it took me a while to figure out what's well, the thigh. You know, it's, it's really not as easy as it sounds, but there's a cowlick in the back of the leg. When you look at the back of the leg, there's a cowlick. Once the, once the hair changes direction, that's your line. Simple. No reason for rocket science. You know, we look at notes of the grooming table and we're like, oh, well, there's like three lines dotted. <laughs> So that's it. Just look for the cowlick. You can see where the, the okay, direction of the hair starts to change. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull this up. I'll go on this side first. I'm going to come in and fall off. Come in, fall off. This saves me time with blending and scissoring. Some of those aren't comfortable with scissoring. So the more you can do with your clipper, the better. So you move this up. And 
then there's your correct pattern. And then you can clean everything up. Bring his leg back. Rasha, can we use um number 10 or no? Uh, you can use it. I forgot to add that one in there. You can use a 10 or even a 15. There's some dogs that like them. Clients like their back really tight. So you could do a 15, you could do a 10. I did one 30 at one point in my life. The lady was crazy and it was a white schnauzer. But she liked it skin. She liked it real military. Legs really short. So here I'm gonna go with the direction of the hair. I don't wanna leave any marks. And then clean up this back, which I'll go over the back one more time with the Brevera to clean up the thigh. Joshua, with, sorry, with the back leg, um, here, with the back leg, you know there, um, there's some, like, different patterns, you know, some of them they go like this, some of them they go the way it is like that, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, Like it, what, here? No, yes, no, the back, back leg. The back, the back, the back leg. Oh, the back, the back leg. leg. Yeah, you know the that some, some of the patterns are practically, they're shaving like the whole leg and they're yeah. only leaving like the a little front bit. Of the, the front. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so what's your question? I mean, my question is, which is the correct pattern? Because exactly, I mean, so sometimes. So the correct pattern is just the thigh. If you run your finger yes, through thigh. here, you're going to feel where the thigh muscle stops. And then you draw a line to the back where you find the cow lick, mm -hmm. and that's the correct pattern. There should always be some hair in front of it. Mm. If there's no hair in front of it, it's wrong. No, there is hair, but they shape, they do like, like a, something like this. I mean, they take, sorry. Yeah. It's something like, I like, 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 like this. Yeah, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. It's wrong. You, you should have hair all back here that you should touch up with your scissors and there should be hair here. And it should be... Now with this line here, and skin, and blend it in. Tail is the same length as the body. Now, how many of us back brush? How many, how many of us can't stand it? Hey, back brush, right? Scissor. Right. So if you're from the back of the dog, brush, clip. Brush, clip. It's very weird, but if you practice, it's more time efficient. You can get all this hair that didn't come off earlier. Yes. Who called me? Somebody called me? No, I brush, brush. So brush, flip, brush, flip. Uh, I, I never got, I never got comfortable with it. Yeah. And it's completely. <clears throat> I went my first 20 different. years never using the vacuum system, but in the van it does. I use it same yeah, time. I usually go reverse. Yeah, you can go reverse. Uh, same as a seven is a four. Yeah. So you can do a four. The only problem is with a dog like this, if I go against, <laughs> it, it messes the follicle up, and then every time that dog comes in, the hair is going, and like you'll never get to learn the the curls on the dog and the cow legs. So usually. As time goes by, we get to learn the dog and the cow licks and where everything is, and our grooms usually get better like that. But when we back clip a terrier, it you know the hair is pretty, but the follicle is like very important on a dog like this. So if you pull it in a certain direction, it grows in that direction. If I pull it to the side and it's not supposed to go to the side, it's going to start to grow to the side. So we always have to make sure we encourage the hair on terriers to grow in the correct direction. So I don't really like the back brush because it does create more uh, cowlick. What if you had a snoodle and then basically 
has to be like in the snazzy clip, but her back part is always curled, and I can never find that way. So I had to do the whole reverse. There's thing. some sometimes we can't get around it. You know, there, there's yeah. just certain like, occasions. Like I can't even find like the the the, the, the vision of the like, where the carrier the, the mm -hmm. skirt where it's supposed to be because it flares upwards. It's like going outward kind of way. So it's like going this way and upward mm -hmm. that way, and I'm like. How am I supposed to actually make the skirt look like a skirt? If it looks like it's coming out, like I'm actually taking it off. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Even if the shirt is clean, the shirt is simple. The client is not. She's not gonna flip. If it looks terrible, she's gonna flip. She's gonna flip. If you're encouraging her about it, you're excited about. Oh, look how much better this looks. It's all a mind game. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like. Like the shape that, oh my god! I never get to actually talk but to this client. Like, hey, hey, hey! You know, you, you you can train easily train yeah. your clients to, mm -hmm. you know, know what's best for the dog because yeah. you're supposed but to know what's best. I can't talk to the client and actually let her know that I'm grooming it because she thinks my boss is doing it. You make your boss do it. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or or just give it to your boss and tell your boss you don't want it anymore. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the other side of the pattern. Then I'm going to scissor, and then, you know, it doesn't look finished right now, but we're going to go over it again. Uh -huh. so I got one the other day. Yeah. I'll show you some pictures. It's like the typical frail schnauzer that comes in, and I use the hairspray, and it like completely changed kind of like the look of the leg. So I'll show you guys. It's not the best photo, but you can, you can see it's possible. It's not. Yeah, the hairspray available now. When's the hairspray available? What? When's the hairspray going to be available? Yeah. Oh, um. No. I don't know yet. Maybe. 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 We are just <laughs> trying to figure out the exportation. Okay. So maybe in April, we're trying to figure out the export. Uh, because for now, some of the products are still being produced, mm -hmm. like the hairspray. And uh, the colognes, which I can't wait till those come out. I know. Because they're like... <laughs> Awesome. The colognes is coming April. Okay, colognes are coming April. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but from Hydra? Colognes from Hydra? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So then you got manly smells, you have oh, neutral good. smell, you have baby smell, and you have girly smell. Uh, oh, they're wow. pretty much all called VIP something. VIP candy. VIP, VIP candy, candy yeah. forever. Yeah. 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 So they smell really good, and it's a, a different <laughs> scent palette, just like our shampoos. <laughs> it's uh, kind of a human. <laughs> So the cologne specifically smell like you went to Macy's and, and smelled all the Dolce and all that stuff. That's kind of like the like less less pooch kind of smells. The pooch is more fresh. I find them more on the fresh side, and they smell. The pooch has some good yeah, cologne. Good. This compares to that as as far as. But I noticed their flowery smell makes some dogs sneeze. Yeah, yeah. Um, anybody know black gold? Black gold powder. So there's a blonde one. The blonde, the black one makes you sneeze. They just like go into my sense. Yeah, the blonde one is like. <laughs> I can't even open the blonde one. It's like I start sneezing yeah. profusely. There's something in the blonde I don't like, but the black is good. Uh, Better than quick stuff? I like the black one more. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll be honest, I, I, I uh, tested that product. Uh, she, I was one of the first ones she sent it to. Said, hey, you, try it, try it, try it. And it works probably better for people than it does for dogs. Uh, a strong, heavy bleed, black gold is not going to stop. Yeah. It doesn't matter how bad it's going to make it. Yeah, I know because I tried it. Yeah. Um, it's just an alternative. Uh, they yeah. created an alternative product that has no chemicals, stuff like that, which I'm a big, strong believer in my shop. Everything's trying to be as eco-friendly as possible. Um, so I like to use black gold for light bleeds, cuts. Uh, and I usually, usually mostly use it for uh, cover-ups. So if you have a black dog or you burn the foot, cut the foot on a poodle, or you clean the foot, yeah, throw some black powder on there, and it's right. gone. Uh, it's good for healing. It's good for a lot of things. So, uh, but a strong, heavy, quick. When you quick the nail, quick stop. The brand quick stop is the best. And they have this new clotted stuff. But that does not work at all. 
It doesn't? No. Wow. I, no. Like I was told it would work better than Quick Stop, and then it That's what I was told. No, yeah. no I, it doesn't. Uh, no, it What's his name? Chuck. <laughs> Chuck Quick <laughs> Rumors Helper. I love, I love him too. And he's like, oh, you know, this stuff's awesome. And I know usually the stuff he, he, uh, he basically I mean, no, buys the company. Not too much bleeding. Yeah, but if it's, it's really, I think Jesse Olden. Yeah, Claude is probably not. So yeah, <laughs> use, Quick Stop is your best. Whoever asked, who asked that question? What about I didn't. If, oh. if the gold powder was better than. Oh no, yeah. for a strong bleed, wow. quick nail, quick stop, and then anything else that's not profusely. And you can't even get the original Quick Stop anymore. Now all you can get is Miracle Can, which is not as good. No. Uh, I think Amazon still has oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazon. Um, Amazon. There's another brand, right <laughs> something, right, <laughs> right stop, right something. It, it almost looks it like looks the like same logo. Yellow, just, yeah, but like that's, that's quick stop. Logo. But the, the the same. There's a different company that kind of imitates them. Can you guys talk about right away stop? <laughs> what? Is it right away stop? Because that's what my like friend actually has, uh, and it's not even worth it's it. It's clumpy. It has to be clumpy. Oh no, so it's not hers. <laughs> uh, the lighter the powder, the more sandy it is, the less it's going to work. So you want yeah. something that's thin. Uh, if you're in a, ever in a situation where you don't have quick stop, corn starch. They're yeah, or or flour. You get flour. A little, cheaper little too. warm water <clears throat> and create a paste, mm -hmm. and then with the paste, you can slap it on the nail. There's been a time where I was at a house, <laughs> she doesn't like that idea. I didn't break quick stop. I asked the client, Hey, you got some flour? She's like, Yeah, it's like, Yeah, I just gotta do something really quick. And I mixed it up with some warm water in the back, and then stop the bleeding. So that was that was a lifesaver. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's go over the schnauzer. Um, I went down to the elbow. Mm -hmm. I took the whole chest off. Mm -hmm. I created my first point, which should be your pattern line. Your undercarriage mm -hmm. should start where mm -hmm. your leg starts. Mm -hmm. The line should carry through all the way up to the top. It should have a slight slope because the dog is moving forward, right? So flat front, slight slope creates movement. We want to create movement without the dog actually moving. I'm going to just kind of blend this a little better so I can move on to the other side. Here we go. We got the back leg. Everybody is clear on the back leg, the thigh muscle, and the cow leg. Mm -hmm. Anybody know where the schnauzer comes from? Germany. Um, how many bass are we supposed to? Uh, let's do a let's do a quick question. How many bass should we be doing on a dog? One. One. There you go. Now, who remembers the extra soft when I was talking about extra soft? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is uh, can you dilute? No, you don't dilute. We gotta take one at a time. Here. <laughs> she did. Too. You said it first. Yeah, she did. You're welcome. They said a uh, bath apron. Uh, be warned, you're gonna sweat. So if you're gonna give it to the bather, make sure the bather has, you know, a change of clothes if they're gonna be working all day in it. Uh, Let's go over there to the other side. It's a weight loss problem. <laughs> and then now I'm going to go over everything I went over last time. I didn't bring a four blade. I'm going to see what I can do with the two comb, but I doubt I'm going to be able to do much. Nobody brought a four blade into the ring. No way. You have to, oh, I was going to say. <laughs> All right, so let's go over this. She asked me, she has dogs, which we do. We do it all the time. And I, it took me a while to understand what you were saying, but now I get it. Uh, when you have a dog like this and, you, and you're going reverse, and you know that gives you a better finish, or you like it better, or that's how the client wants. Usually when you go reverse, you can see it right here. You, you create an hard line. So it's really hard to create this smooth blended transition uh, when you're going reverse. Mm -hmm. So what you do is 
you give yourself a little wiggle room, and then you take the same number after going against the grain, and you go with the grain. If you have to drop a number to create that transition, uh, if you can't really create it, then you're going to have to go over that line with your thinning shears. Oh, okay. So you just give yourself a little wiggle room so you don't bring the line down further. So that's a common mistake we do. We bring it down, uh, say no to the grooming table book. Yeah. Got like a, the, the Rocky Mountain line and then you have like a <laughs> straight line and then it says blend and then mm -hmm. there's some space there and we're like, you know. Like, so we do the best we can do when a dog comes in and we've never done the pattern before and we're looking and we have the notes of the grooming table book uh, that's kind of like that concept that's what that line is telling you the first line is telling you where you should start dropping off at and that space between that line and the dotted line is the line that you should have wiggle room to blend and then that bottom line is the actual line of the dog so that just helps you with pattern, I don't know who has the new book, the new version. Does it have it easier to explain on that one? No. It's the same. <laughs> Just more breeds. <laughs> um, so anybody know what the schnauzer was used was bred for? Hunting. Badger. Badgers? Badgers, pheasants. You know, why, why does the schnauzer or interior have a beard or eyebrows or a false? Protect their face. Protect their face from what? Beard grows. Because they're the roast. Yeah, they're the roast. Yeah, they're the roast. You guys are smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm going with the grain. I'm Tightening, uh, keeping the skin taut is the correct word, taut. So, if you, this is, uh, was a struggle for me for a long time. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys still have the same problem. I still kind of think about it when I do it. But if you pull the leg back, come on, bro. Can you come to some slack? It's a boy. Boy. So once, if you keep the leg stiff and extended, you can come in and scoop out. Once you feel it kind of bounce, if you're letting the clipper do the work, you're going to feel it go in and you're going to bounce out. Mm -hmm. This is really hard to do it like this, so if it's easier, you stretch it back. Mm -hmm. Like in a natural form of like stretching the back. Or why his leg is here, you can start. Stay. <laughs> and then bring it up. Well, now we got a perfect little scoop without creating a line, right? And the last thing we want to do is go over that part with the scissors, right? Like usually what messes the pattern up. Mm -hmm. I go against right here. You're going to create a nice ugly little line right here. You're going to do the same thing on this side. This line is kind of there already. I'm gonna do the bottom of the tail uh, with my Brevera, and then you always wanna check right here. Mm -hmm. Not here, not here. Oh, here's a good spot too. This will tell you how warm it is, but this yeah. is actually yeah, what the dog yeah. feels. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna lift the carriage up. I'm gonna go until my clipper says that's enough. My clipper literally says it's enough, don't go in. And when you feel that, don't dig in there. It's very critical to trust the clipper. This, the clippers are really oddly designed to where, if you think of it in that nature, you know, you kind of know where you're like, I don't know if I should do that. It's probably because <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Some of us have terriers, we want to strip, but you know, it, it's a lot of work. This guy has to be pulled every week. Once you miss a week, you go backwards three weeks. So it's a really big responsibility to make sure you're on top of it. And if you're not on top of it, there's really no reason. I mean, yeah, you're, you're preventing dermatitis, you're preventing skin issues. Uh, this, the, the hair is designed to be pulled. So you're like kind of contradicting it by not pulling it. But as long as you card your dog, you're safe. And I remember you asked me a while ago, mm -hmm. and just card, just card, card, card until, you know, you miraculously figure out how to, you know, rotate the coat properly. But as long as you're carding the coat, you're encouraging the, you're, you know, you're scratching the skin. It's kind of what it is. You know, the dog needs that little, like a cat with its claws and needs to pull. Some of us believe in do declawing, but that's another, that's another seminar. That's the rabbit seminar. Uh, and then same with the back brush. <clears throat> Keep one brush in one hand as long as the dog is standing up. Of course, it's ideal if the dog is always sitting down. This is not the best technique, but practice this technique. Brush, clip, brush, clip, brush, clip. Um, another common problem I see in the shop, uh, your, your dog doesn't want to cooperate and we're, we're stuck uh, disciplining the dog every time. Uh, it, you know, hopefully it's not physical discipline, but um, we never give it positive encouragement. Never. I don't hear many groomers giving positive. As long as the dog is doing what it's supposed to do, we got nothing to say, right? But you gotta give it positive encouragement, even though this guy's gonna do what he wants. Uh, it's always good to say good boy. It's always yeah. good to congratulate him. For those who come with the treats, oh, can you give him treats and here's oh, for Hills for his water? <laughs> you know, those are the clients where it's okay to give them treats, but I never suggest as a groomer to be given, yeah. you know, even the most hypoallergenic, which I had an experience one time with a company, I decided, oh, look, Dehydrated stuff. It was really cool. Papaya, and uh -huh. banana, and plantains, and all kinds of different cool stuff. Dehydrated, hypoallergenic, sensitive skin stuff, and the dog broke out. Oh my like, god! Extreme. She's like, "What did you get my dog?" I was like, "Oh, plantain chip, dehydrated <laughs> sauce right here." Oh my god! Da, da, da. And like ever since then, I learned my lesson. Don't ever give a dog. It doesn't matter how safe it is. Whatever the client gives you is what you give the dog. So if you can tell your client next time, bring whatever treats you have at home, bring me an extra bag. So I'll put him in his little cubby hole or his file. And whenever he comes in, I'll give him his little cookies. <laughs> and that's how you go about it. Uh, so positive encouragement is a, a must on dogs. Uh, not only negative encouragement. So one one hand. How many uh how many alcohols are out there? Two. 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 Did I give? I gave yes. you one. Yeah. <laughs> Two. And then they are. Wait, well, I know you don't know the names, but what's the difference? Natural and non-natural. Yeah.